Hello again and welcome to another video of me painting a hornbill in watercolour paint. When I first saw this image I thought to myself you know, it would make, it would make a really nice watercolour painting. And it's been interesting because I haven't used watercolour paint in about 18 months because I got so stuck into using coloured pencil, teaching myself how to use them, blah blah blah. And it's been good and annoying at the same time because certain things that I felt like I knew how to do, I have suddenly forgotten how to do. <laughs> it was kind of like reteaching myself certain things. It's been also good because I got to draw in my first, well, paint in my first, like DSLR blurred background effect. So that was interesting. And you'll find out how I did that as the video progresses. So in case you didn't notice from my previous videos, I tend to get stuck into the eye first. And that's because I like to see where I'm coming from as I start. And I think once you start detailing the eyes, it tends to set the portrait off before you've actually finished the portrait. And I tend to detail the whole thing before I move on. I detail an area and move on. A lot of artists won't do that, they prefer to block out the whole thing. You know, which is fine, it's just it's never been for me. And in terms of this eye, it was a really bright flame orange eye. So I've got these oranges in the eye which I laid down first, which was the base coat for the eye. And then because it's watercolour, I had to let it dry. And I added black on top of it next. And I let it dry because obviously if you mix the orange and the black together you'll get like a muddy brown colour. So it's always best to let it dry so I could keep that really nice bright flame colour. Once that was all dry I added little bits and bobs of detail with the black again within the eye. Because you know the iris isn't perfect, there's got crevices and lines in it. And all that has to be added to influence the realism of the portrait. Once all that was dry, I used some white gouache to add the sparkle in the eye, the little white bit. And that gives the illusion of wetness in the eye, which also adds to the realism. I'm completely happy with the eye at this point. It's really popping off the page with the flame oranges going on. Looks really nice, so I decide to move on to the surroundings, which is a kind of like a weird white fleshy colour. I know that sounds disgusting but you know it's, it is what it is. <laughs> and I had to mix up a paint grey and a white to get the tone that I wanted which is like a really light grey. And I used that as a base and then once that dried I used a diluted paint grey to finely paint in the wrinkles so they weren't you know too much in your face but they're still there. And that's what made it work. And then that kind of links you into the black feathers. I didn't paint in the feathers to their finished perfection. I kind of just painted in a bit of black. And that allowed that section of that portrait to really pop. And I could see that I liked it and I could move on to the beak. The beak was really simple to paint. It was a creamy champagne colour that mixed into apricots so wherever you see the shadowed areas you get an apricot colour and then it would mix into the cream. The way I was painting it was I'd lay down the colours so you'd lay down the champagne the cream colour first let it dry and then put the apricot and the yellows over the top and I don't know if you can notice my right hand would come in every now and again and I've got a small piece of tissue paper in my hand and I'm dabbing away any excess water which allowed it to dry smooth, so I won't have any harsh water lines. This can also be accomplished by completely washing the area in clear water. Make sure it's clean, and then you can just add your colours and they'll all mix together and give you the same effect. When that's dried, you just keep doing it over and over. You keep layering it until you get a nice smooth effect. And now we're on to my most favourite part of this entire portrait. It's the first time that I've ever painted a blurred DSLR type background. 
so I was so happy when it worked. I'll also go through all the things I wish I did differently for this as well. Um, but I basically started by completely soaking the page with water. And it's exactly the same as I told you to paint the beak. I just laid down dark greens and light greens and because the page is wet they'll all blend together into a, a nice mix of colour. And it should be nice and blurred too if you ever try this. And this will take several layers, so you'll do your first layer, let it completely dry. Soak over the top of the paint again, but you know, don't really push your paintbrush into the page because you'll lift the colour off, you just want to soak it. And then keep layering the same colours over and over, and you'll have a nice, smooth colour effect. But because it's a DSR, you have these light spots that shine through, and I wanted to create that also. So I brought a product called a magic sponge and it's designed to take paint off a page and you dip them in water and you soak them, make them damp and then you just draw circles with this sponge. Now there's two things I would have done differently. I would have used tube paint instead of the pans because it would have been easy for me to lay down the paint. And secondly, I wouldn't have gone so hard with the magic sponges because not only were they removing the paint, they started removing the paper as well. After all that, the rest of the hornbill was basically just straight black. Because of how the reference photo was taken, you couldn't actually tell where the feathers would be. And that's basically how you would paint feathers or hair anyway because if you want to create realistic hair, for example, you wouldn't paint in every single strand of hair because your eyes don't see it that way. You'd paint it in in massive blocks of colour and then in certain areas you paint one or two feathers, one or two hairs and this creates the illusion of fur and it also tricks the mind into thinking, oh, this bird is covered in feathers and that's how I painted it. I also do this with colour pencil, graphite pencil, charcoal. You never ever paint in every single strand of hair because it won't look realistic. Okay then guys that's another video done. I hope you enjoyed this one. That eye is really popping off the page it looks amazing but my favourite I think is the background. It's already given me so many ideas on painting clouds or mist. So I'm really, really happy with them magic sponges that I brought. Please like, subscribe and comment and thank you very much for watching.